History remembers the victors. That especially so goes for the video game industry. But for every PlayStation 4, Nintendo Wii, and Game Boy Advance out there, there are heaps of other systems that just didn't make the cut. And of course, that's not to mention the occasional failure that's tarnished the name of a big name company. These can range from consoles and console accessories that just missed the mark, to even a major hardware issue that threatened to bring down one of the most popular game consoles of the past 20 years. While some of these hardware failures were just small defects that plagued certain systems, with some of these entries, the hardware itself was the problem, with perhaps there being nothing possible that could have been done to save them. So today on The Gamer, let's take a look back at some of these tech troubles, these pieces of horrible hardware, these causes of corporate confusion, as we take a look back at 10 of the greatest hardware failures of all time. Number 1. Virtual Boy Back in 1995, a good two decades before virtual reality would even be a blip on most gamers' radar, Game Boy inventor Gunpei Yokoi spearheaded development on a supposed VR console for Nintendo called the Virtual Boy. Despite the name and timing, it was not intended either as a proper successor to the wildly popular Game Boy or the Super Nintendo. Really, Nintendo seemed rather unsure on where the Virtual Boy stood. It, however, was noted for its ability to only display games in a headache-inducing red and black, being bulky and awkward to use, and has since become the worst-selling system in Nintendo's history. It was much maligned, and the overall experience of playing on it was described by many a gamer as being miserable. However, I'd argue that the Virtual Boy wasn't all bad. Awkward to play for more than 30 minutes at a time? Sure. But if it weren't for this system, we would have never gotten the start of the Mario Sports series, nor one of the most underrated Wario Land titles of all time. Number 2. Ouya The Ouya was a Kickstarter-funded Android-based mini-console that was set to take the world by storm. Until it didn't. Yeah, most folks ultimately realized it was basically just a game system that let you play the same games you could play on basically any Android phone released since 2012. Its campaign raised over $8.5 million from backers, and the system launched at only $99. But that wasn't enough to make the Ouya a big hit. Parent company Ouya Inc. quickly started hemorrhaging money after it launched, and in 2015, all the Ouya assets were sold off to company Razer Inc. That said, the Ouya was at least neat to look at. What with its metallic finish and the overall system itself being so small that was literally held down with weights inside of it. But the controller felt poorly built and was awkward to use, and the system really didn't have what it took to stand out against the PS4, Xbox One, or even the 3DS. Number 3. Sega 32X Some console peripherals are poorly received. Some may have a lot of wires to hook them up. And some might just be pricey. But only the Sega 32X was such a disaster that many credit it for single-handedly sinking a company's reputation so low that other companies would want to stop working with them, and then, seven years later, they'd leave the video game console market. Now, with that said, the 32X perhaps gets too much of a bad rep. Sure, it was merely just a method Sega of America had to try to expand the life of the aging Sega Genesis in 1994, while Sega of Japan was pushing them to release the Sega Saturn. Which, by the way, they would do not even a year later in 1995. With that said, there were some great 32X exclusive titles. The likes of Knuckles Chaotix, Virtual Racing Deluxe, and Tempo are a ton of fun. Really, I mean it. But the timing and execution of this Genesis add-on was legendarily awful, and it would forever taint Sega's reputation. Number 4. Gizmondo So what features would make you want to buy a handheld game console? What about the system potentially making you watch ads before you could game on it? Perhaps a flagship title literally called Sticky Balls? What about a parent company with Swedish Mafia ties? Well, if you answered yes to any of those, then you're in luck because that's what Tiger Telematics Gizmondo has to offer. And perhaps the saddest thing about the Gizmondo is that it actually doesn't feel like a bad piece of hardware. It's comfortable to hold and looks sleek by 2005 standards, but it sold so poorly that the aforementioned ads were never even launched. Tiger just could not figure out how to pivot it right to go up against the likes of the PSP. As such, only 14 games were ever released for it, and it sold fewer than 25,000 units worldwide. 
Oh well, at least we got sticky balls out of it. Number 5. Yellow Light of Death Let's go back a couple of generations to the battle between the PS3 and Xbox 360. Long story short, PS3 motherboards on the original models were said to be prone to overheating, with this issue displayed by Yellow Light of Death. It was such a prominent problem that Sony even became the subject of a BBC investigation. But as it turns out, this may have just been overblown. According to an article done by TechCrunch in 2009, the math worked out to there being only 12,500 faulty PS3s for every 2.5 million sold. The math works out to that only being half of 1% of all systems being faulty. Plus, a few years after the BBC report was published, it was quietly removed from their website. Perhaps the real issue here was the yellow light problem being blown out of proportion and causing worry in many a PS3 owner. Number 6. Steam Machines Steam Machines were supposed to be Valve's big way to break into the console market. Until they weren't. After Valve announced SteamOS in 2013, they also announced a line of digital-only consoles that could be hooked up to a TV and used to play Steam games. The only issue was that the majority of Steam games weren't compatible, and the general public just wasn't interested. As such, most of these were quietly taken off the market only a few years after launch. The biggest one I have any memory of is this Alienware Steam Machine from 2015. And like every other Steam Machine out there, I know absolutely no one who actually bought the thing. I think most people, myself included, felt that if we're going to use Steam, we'll just use it on PC. Number 7. GBA E-Reader The Game Boy Advance was a massive success, so of course in 2001, shortly after its launch, Nintendo would try to expand its abilities with one of the weirdest add-ons of all time. This was the Game Boy Advance E-Reader. This allowed games to be played off of trading cards with data stored onto them that could be swiped into the E-Reader itself. It could also act as a physical form of DLC for some existing games. It even had its own exclusive Mario Party video game card game hybrid that took advantage of it. And some of these card packs were way cool, what with being able to be bought at stores for the same price as a regular pack of trading cards. But issues arose due to some e-reader card based games taking many multiple cards to be played and a second GBA and a link cable being needed to use the DLC cards. As such, it sold poorly outside of Japan, and was quietly pulled from shelves only a few years after launch. However, in Japan, folk seemed to love this thing, and remained on sale there until 2008. Number 8. Nokia Engage In 2003, years before smartphones existed and actual games could be played on mobile devices, Nokia tried to pave their own path into the handheld games market by releasing the Nokia Engage. This was a cell phone game console hybrid that was meant to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the GBA. And it was a massive flop, due in part to issues such as the battery having to be taken out to swap game cartridges, requiring a SIM card to even boot up, and it looking like a metal taco. And this leading to a phenomenon known as side talking, which was an early meme. It didn't help either that all the buttons on this thing felt like old cell phone buttons instead of things you'd actually want on a quality games console. I think it's easy to see why the N-Gage never took off, even if features such as online play made it appear ahead of its time. Number 9. Mattel Hyperscan Despite the failure of the e-reader worldwide, Nintendo would not be the only company that tried to combine video games and collectible trading cards. Released in 2006, the Mattel Hyperscan was a budget-priced games console that featured games that required the use of scannable trading cards. You ever want to play a fighting game with minute-long load times that requires you to physically scan in every character you'd want to play as? Well, Mattel has you covered. Not even the creation of titles based off of Marvel IPs could save this thing. It was abysmal to use, and it's easy to see why it failed. 10. Red Ring of Death Let's talk about the most infamous case of hardware failure to ever plague a major games console. Sony's PS3 issues are nothing compared to the ones Microsoft had with the Xbox 360. The Red Ring of Death would literally kill your system, and it was also caused by overheating motherboards. It was reported that over 54% of all original 360s got the red ring, and the fallout from this still haunts Microsoft to this day. 
On top of that, red ring problems have only gotten worse for original model 360s over time. It's why, if you're ever in the market for a used 360 nowadays, it's recommended that you opt for one of the two later revisions. I mean, let's be real. I know a good few folks who would have likely never gotten a PS3 and become massive Sony fans if it weren't for them having several 360 kick the bucket. So with that, that's it for 10 of the greatest hardware failures in gaming history. Should we have added any other moments of malfunctioning motherboards making maddening masses? What do you think are the worst game consoles of all time? Well, let us know down in the comments below. And subscribe to The Gamer for more awesome regular content like this. See you next time.